Hello, this is Robert Inglar and this is the explainer about the harris todero model based on section 7.6 in the Todero and Smith textbook. The harris todero model is an economic theory of migration from rural areas to the city and it casts this decision into in a cost-benefit setting uh, where the potential migrant trades off the expected returns versus the cost of migration. Now the cost of migration here is that the that this person will lose their rural job and the pay that comes with it. The return is the probability of getting an urban job that's potentially better paying. You know, now, in, this, in what follows, we will consider two versions of this model. In the first one, if the migrant doesn't get this good urban job, uh, they, get, they remain unemployed. Um, in the second one, they will uh, find an informal job. And the second version can best be illustrated uh, in the following way. Um, so we have our agricultural worker right here on the rice paddies uh, earning uh, 60 rupees a day. And uh, that's, uh, that's a given because they have currently have that job. Now, if they move to the city, ideally they land this cushy call center job uh, at, a, uh, at an income of 200 rupees per day. Uh, but there's only this finalized version of one in four chance of actually getting this uh, high paying job. Um, on the other hand, they might end up in an informal job uh, in, the, in the city and that uh, would pay much less uh, than uh, either the formal urban uh, job or the uh, rural job in, in agriculture. And we will see why this is an equilibrium outcome that you have such an underpaid informal uh, class. Now, the, in, the, in the book, this figure is used to introduce the model. Um, and there's a, this is a, in this diagram, uh, first of all, we have on the horizontal axis uh, the total labor supply, and that uh, that's runs from uh, on the, on the uh, left hand side, uh, we have the, have the number of agricultural workers starts where we move from left to right, the number of agricultural workers rises. Uh, and we assume here that this is a simple two sector model so that everyone who's not working in agriculture works in manufacturing. So the point on the x axis determines how many people work in. Uh, in agriculture and how many work in manufacturing. Um, so in this model there's two key schedules. The first is the AA schedule shown here. That's the demand for agricultural labor uh, set against the agricultural wage rate on the vertical axis right here. On the, on the other vertical axis we have the manufacturing wage rate and the corresponding uh, labor demands uh, for workers in manufacturing. So that, those are the two key schedules. Now, uh, if this were an if we were in an efficient equilibrium, the the wages in the two sectors would be equal, uh, and we would be in point E. So uh, wages would be equal at W A star and W M star. And LA star, LM star would be the, the number of workers in agriculture and manufacturing. But uh, the, what sets this, this uh, model in motion is a urban labor market friction. And that urban labor market friction uh, will leads to a higher fixed wage in manufacturing. Now that's a crucial assumption. So these formal urban wages are fixed and higher than agricultural wages for the same type of worker. Now, there's several reasons why this might be the case. Um, the government could use these uh, formal jobs as a showcase to show off to the world that, uh, that people are well off in the, at least in the capital city. It could be an efficiency wages argument that um, that you want to have the highest productivity workers and you want these workers to work, put in a lot of effort. So paying them more might, uh, might achieve this. 
It could be due to bargaining power by unions that push up wages in the formal sector. Uh, and or this might be combined with regulations in the labor market that make it harder to um, uh, that that's, that may restrict the number of jobs and that thereby pushing up uh, wages. Now, regardless of why this uh, uh, this is uh, this actually comes to pass, we assume this uh, uh, this to be the case. So again, we have that. Uh, manufacturing wages are much higher than uh, the efficient wages would be, uh, where the where we would be in an equilibrium. Now, uh, that efficient equilibrium is thus out of reach, but we do get to an equilibrium, um, and in this equilibrium, we have to take the wages in the manufacturing sector as given. Um, and then uh, we get the, now from this, uh, <clears throat> from this equilibrium, we, we, see, we see what the, uh, what the wages in agriculture will be and what the share of workers in manufacturing would be versus the total uh, urban labor pool. And in the uh, diagram that we saw before, this, uh, this equilibrium, condition is shown with the uh, QQ curve and that plots all the combinations where uh, uh, the equilibrium condition that we just had before holds and this, in this equilibrium condition wages in expected wages in industry are equal to to the, to the wages in agriculture um, so at that point workers would have no incentive to, to migrate. So how do we get there? Well, uh, let's say we are uh, only workers that are in, that can, can get a job in the manufacturing sector, uh, move to the city. So we are, so we would have LM workers in, um, in the city and the rest would be in agriculture. But at that number of, at that level, uh, the agricultural demand, uh, demand for agricultural workers, would we would be at a much lower wage level, so W H star star. Now at that uh, wage level, it's very attractive to move to the city for even if you would not get that uh, that urban job, uh, you would run the risk of being unemployed and having an income of zero. But uh, if we follow this QQ curve, we will end up at point Z. So at point Z, the wages in agriculture are higher than they uh, would have been in the efficient equilibrium. Um, but, um, but, uh, but they are still lower than in uh, the formal urban sector. So uh, why is this an equilibrium? Well, because uh, only this many people have an urban job. Um, this many people have an agricultural job, and this and the, and this many people uh, are unemployed and have an income of zero. Now, that's not an entirely realistic assumption because if you have no income, you tend to not live very long. Um, so we have an extended model, uh, version two where we have an informal uh, labor market, informal job added to this. So uh, unlike before, the income doesn't drop to zero, but uh, to WI. And WA and WI are again determined in the, in the market. So, we, so they uh, are uh, set, they emerge to make sure that this equilibrium condition holds. Um, so the chance of getting a formal job are given by this, uh, the number of formal jobs available uh, over the total urban pool and the, uh, the wages in the informal sector uh, are set to make sure that this holds. Now from here we can see why the earlier example that we used here where uh, the informal urban sector pays less than the formal urban sector uh, and less than agriculture is an equilibrium because th this equilibrium condition will only hold if um, 
uh, knowing that uh, formal urban wages are higher than agricultural wages. So for this equilibrium condition to hold, WI, so the wage in the informal sector, the income in the informal sector has to be lower than uh, both the formal urban, but also than the agricultural uh, wage. Now the key insight from this model is that uh, is shown below, namely that the informal sector is an unavoidable counterweight to the formal sector. Uh, when we have this uh, formal wage being higher than the uh, efficient market uh, solution.